Hi, it's Dwyer. I hope everybody is having a simply spectacular and special Labor Day weekend. It is Sunday, September the 5th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site for premium content. Dwyer70905.substack.com. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've seen clips of Anthony Joshua, and he looks to be in great shape. Looks like he's lost some weight, right? It's clear he understands the challenge involved, that this fight against Usyk is a major challenge, that he needs to reinvent himself somewhat, or at a minimum, be at his absolute best against this opponent, right? Let's be clear here. Usyk, younger than Vladimir Klitschko, an active fighter, unlike Klitschko, who had been out of the ring for more than a year, right? Usyk, of course, unbeaten unlike most of Joshua's opponents, going back a few fights. Well, what's astonishing is that while the champ understands the challenge involved, right, and let's be real here. I know we've had some great fights this year. This is the fight of the year. Why? Because there's the heavyweight champion and then there's everyone else. Right? We want to know who the baddest man on the planet is. And as you walk around town, you know size matters. Right, The baddest man on the planet is not going to be a welterweight, folks. I don't care how skilled he is. As I've said here before, there's the heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else. And this is a major fight. But for our purposes here on this channel, what is simply astonishing to me, I'm at a loss right now, is how the heavyweight champion can understand the risk involved to the point where he's in great shape, he's lost weight against a more agile opponent. But yet sports books here in the United States are still giving you a plus 205 on Usyk. What sport are they watching? Let me also say too, I have read the comments here. Two earlier videos I've made on this fight. This fight warrants a lot of videos. And people are saying, hey, you know, Joshua by stoppage. Usyk is simply too small. He can't hang with Joshua. Forget the fact that Kubrat Pulev in a fight where Pulev is getting blown out in the third round, makes it to something like the ninth round, right? People are just completely convinced that Joshua is going to catch a guy who has never been stopped as a professional. Well, let me make a few points here, right? The first point concerning Joshua's weight loss his emphasis on, we'll call it dexterity. He wants to be more agile. Clearly, he wants to be able to go the distance. He's been joking with Eddie Hearn about the fact that, you know, uh, people claim that he got tired in trying to knock out Vladimir Klitschko. Let me raise my hand. I'm one of those people, right? Also, you know, people claim that he got tired in trying to knock out Kubrat Pulev. Hey, I'm one of those people, right? So Josh was laughing about the fact that, you know, people have questioned his stamina against some opponents. Again, by the way, Klitschko, Pulev, both a lot older, both a lot less elusive than Usyk. 
right? Klitschko makes it deeper into the fight, by the way, than Kubrat Pulev. Well, just understand that it takes a lot to change. It really does. Um, my mother, may she rest in peace, drove 55 miles an hour. Right now, in her Buick, she drove 55 miles an hour. In other cars she had, she drove 55 miles an hour. Now, let's say you gave her a Ferrari. Let's say she won the lottery and bought herself a Ferrari. Let's say she had a lot more potential there, right? Let's say the Ferrari was well-maintained. I have no doubt as I sit here and make this video that if you hopped in the car with my mother in a Ferrari, she would drive 55 miles an hour. Folks, Joshua can lose all the weight he wants. Is he going to be a different fighter in this championship fight? Is he suddenly going to come out and look like Ali? Folks, the answer is no, right? He's going to come out, look at Joshua fights, figure out the number of punches he throws around. Guess what? That Those are going to be about the number of punches he throws around against Usyk. Against world-class opposition, you don't experiment because you don't have that much of a margin of error. Maybe Joshua will have some incremental change but it's not going to be substantial enough to make up the gap between himself and Usyk in terms of agility, in terms of foot speed, in terms of pacing, right? It's just simply not going to be enough, right? The bottom line was Joshua was winded against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? You saw the real Joshua in the fifth round of the Klitschko fight. He gets Klitschko hurt. He then starts flashing a lot of left hooks. He has a great left hook. But you also saw the problems with Joshua. He's so predictable that a Klitschko who gets off the canvas in that round is able to survive the round. Worse yet, Klitschko actually starts to look good toward the end of the round. Let's just say when Klitschko got up, he figured out, oh, this guy's coming after me with left hooks. Look at the film. Right? Also, reputations matter. If you're fighting a guy who you suspect has stamina problems based on films of his prior fights, then even when you're dazed and confused fresh off the canvas, which Klitschko was in that round, you're going to think to yourself, you know what? If this guy's throwing this many punches this round, right? I'm not going to give up because next round, this guy might be bone tired. And folks, isn't that exactly what happened in the Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight? Right? Let's face it too. This fight against Kubrat Pulev is an interesting fight because he's just getting back into the pocket, isn't he? Because that second fight against Andy Ruiz, he's moving around the ring. He's the one who abandons the pocket, wasn't he? So he's just getting back in the pocket. Let me ask a foundational question. Are you sure that Anthony Joshua has completely gotten over the first Ruiz fight, right? I keep hearing in the comment section here on this fight about the Derek Chisora Usyk fight. People are saying, hey, you know, Usyk struggled against Chisora. Folks, Usyk stayed upright against Chisora. He wasn't knocked down multiple times like Joshua was in the first Ruiz fight. And folks, that's a recent fight. 
Joshua has only fought one guy since fighting Ruiz. And in that fight, Joshua has the guy out in the third round. Just ask yourself, does the guy find a way to continue against a Joe Fraser, against a Sonny Liston, against a George Foreman, against a Lennox Lewis? I would say no. Against Joshua, count the number of rounds that Kubrat Pulev continues on after getting blown out in the third round of that fight. Count the number of rounds, folks. So what am I supposed to take away from Joshua losing weight and joking about his stamina? Am I supposed to believe that this time it's different? Also, we're mentioning the usyk Chizora fight. Folks, do you think there's even a remote possibility that Joshua is going to come after Usyk with the ferocity that Chizora did the first three rounds? Do you see that happening? Can Joshua get that far out of his envelope? Finally, as for the comments where people are saying, oh, you know, I'm expecting Joshua to win by KO. Some people are saying, hey, I think Joshua wins by late KO. Let's talk about another possibility. Right? It's not one I'm going to spend a lot of money on. But it's one I think is a distinct possibility. Revisit the Klitschko knockdown of Joshua. Just revisit it. Understand, Klitschko had gotten off the canvas and gets the knockdown. When Joshua gets off the canvas, in your own words, to yourself privately, describe the shape Joshua is in. Right? Just ask yourself a basic question. How resilient is this fighter? We've all seen guys get dropped in boxing matches, right? Quite frankly, I think it's a rite of passage. I'd rather see a guy get dropped in a boxing match so that later on I can bet on the guy because I'll say, you know what? This guy has tasted adversity. He knows what it's like. But go back to that Klitschko fight. Look at how spent Joshua looks when he gets off the canvas. That's the word I'll use spent, discouraged, right, discouraged. Then fast forward to Joshua getting off the canvas in the Andy Ruiz fight. Right, folks, Joshua looks discouraged. Joshua looks spent. The last round, when Joshua hits the canvas, and he gets up and he's looking at his corner. It's moments like that that you find out what kind of lion you have. How does Joshua look? You know, we've seen fights. The Kanatsky fight. Robert Hellenius drops Kanatsky. Kanatsky is so determined to show that he's not really hurt, that Kanatsky tries to get up when he shouldn't. Right, the Trevor Burbeck fight years ago against Mike Tyson, when Tyson was Tyson. Tyson knocks down Burbeck. There's footage, right, of Burbeck trying to get off the canvas because Burbeck has to show this young guy in his early 20s you didn't hurt me, even though the guy's down, right? So, of course, he gets off the canvas, you see the bravado, and the guy falls back down to the canvas, right? Because he isn't really ready to get off the canvas, right? His body says to him, hey, player, where are you going? We need some seconds here, right? But you can tell Burbank, he's a warrior. 
right? Gets knocked down, wants to get up immediately, right? Was that the Anthony Joshua you saw when he gets knocked down by Klitschko or Andy Ruiz? Why are we assuming that if this fight takes place, there isn't a scenario where Usyk a southpaw. In other words, the level of difficulty is magnified, folks. A southpaw who's slick, who's never been beaten, who has better feet than Joshua, I'm just telling you, who has the faster hands than Joshua. Why are we assuming that if Usyk proves to be too agile for Joshua. If Joshua finds out that he cannot match Usyk, and by the way, Usyk's a slow starter, so look at the early rounds. I'm telling you, Joshua is finished if Usyk starts fast. If you're looking at your scorecard and you privately think that Usyk has won the first three rounds, just understand, you know, the Dwyer scoring technique, Joshua enters the ring because he's popular, because he's like Canelo, because he's like Manny Pacquiao in popularity. Joshua enters the ring with a two-round advantage. If that's gone by the start of the fourth round, if you're looking at your scorecard and you're thinking to yourself, man, Usyk just won the first three rounds, folks, it's over for Joshua. Right, especially if, as you're watching the fight, Usyk's just too fast for Joshua. Usyk's moving in and out. Usyk has the timing down. Isn't there a distinct possibility? Distinct, and I'm talking about a plus 205 underdog, that the underdog gets Joshua tired, Joshua's outclassed, Joshua hits the canvas. Folks, it's happened multiple times. Joshua hits the canvas, and Joshua is too discouraged to continue. Let's remember, Sonny Liston loses his title to Ali on his stool in the corner. Right? Joshua strikes me as a guy who gets discouraged, right? He's a guy who, you know, if things aren't going his way, you know, if it isn't a Kubrat Pulev fight where he has the guy hurt and the fight's pretty much over by the start of the fourth round, if it's not that kind of fight, I just get the feeling that Joshua might realize that he just doesn't have, let's use that word again, the, de the dexterity to deal with an Usyk, right? At that point, unlike Gassiev, who is behind by several rounds, right? That's the blueprint fight, in my opinion. Gassiev is behind by several rounds. His fight against Usyk's a foregone conclusion. By the start of the ninth round, folks, in my opinion, right? Foregone conclusion. Look at the scorecards from the Usyk Gassia fight. I believe here, right, things are a little bit different because I believe Usyk understands he's fighting a Canelo, he's fighting a Manny Pacquiao. Opponents can't take anything for granted. The fight's taking place in Joshua's backyard. Given those facts, I get the feeling that if Joshua gets discouraged and Usyk steps on the gas, folks, there's a distinct possibility that Usyk gets a stoppage. Right? A distinct possibility. Right, and so we're hearing a lot of crazy stuff in the press. Usyk's so undervalued that people in Joe Joyce's camp are saying that Usyk has done whatever he could to avoid Joe Joyce. Folks, 
You know things are ridiculous when guys you've already beaten are talking smack, saying you're hiding from them. Right? This to me would be like Deontay Wilder saying that Tyson Fury's hiding from him. It makes no sense. As for size, I don't get it. You know, I remember Joe Fraser. I remember Mike Tyson. Are so many of the fight fans so young that they don't realize that Usyk is bigger than some of the better heavyweight champions in history? Folks, Rocky Marciano was an Usyk size. Right? And so, <laughs> let's just say it'll be interesting to see how this fight unfolds. Finally, let me close by saying, I hope this fight happens. This weekend, I was all hot and bothered thinking about this Warrington-Lara fight, right? Lara was the underdog, just like Usyk was. The line was not in his favor, right? I, You know, I've lost sight of the boxing public. I, I, I can't even figure out how folks are handicapping fights because take this Usyk fight. Um, you don't even have to know the opponent. You hear that you're getting better than two to one on Usyk, right? A plus 200. You're going to say, hey, what the hell? If he were fighting Tyson Fury, I'd take Usyk at plus 200, right? The odds matter. You understand this is a Hall of Fame fighter, folks. He was the undisputed at Cruiser. Like Joshua, he has an Olympic gold medal. Right? Well, the Lara fight was even more ridiculous. Lara wins the first fight by stoppage. And they made him the underdog against Warrington, who has seven career KOs for the rematch. Understand, Warrington's only chance of winning that fight was by trying to put on a boxing clinic. Folks, that's hard to do in a rematch against a guy who knocked you out. Right, the winner of the first fight's going to be on his front foot, forcing you to move. Also, these judges who like to vote for favorites, right, suddenly there is no favorite because you're looking at the fight and you realize the opponent's already beaten the other guy. Right? Well, the Warrington fight, <sighs> clash of heads, ruled a draw in the second round because Lara gets hurt. Then we had another fight that I couldn't figure out the odds on. You mean to tell me I get Oscar De La Hoya in his return to the ring against a guy with exactly one pro boxing fight, none in the last 10 years? And I was getting Oscar at less than a minus 200? That's ridiculous. Sadly, of course, Oscar contracted COVID. Oscar, our thoughts are with you. Good luck, friend. Not that I know Oscar. Oscar contracted COVID, and that fight got postponed. Now Evander Holifield is stepping in. We'll talk about Holifield Belford in a separate video. But let's just say I do hope this Usyk Joshua fight comes off now because you're getting ridiculously good odds the month of the fight, right? I'm hoping the boxing public doesn't wake up to the fact that Usyk might be one of this generation's absolute best fighters, right? It's hard to mention him in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings because really the pound-for-pound -pound rankings are intended for non-heavyweights, and he's now in the heavyweight division, right? You know why they came up with the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. It's because there's the heavyweight champ, and then there's everyone else, right? You understand that. So, of course, back in the day of Sugar Ray Robinson, people said, hey, 
let's shine a light on these welters and these middleweights. Right? Well, now Usyk, one of the most gifted fighters of this generation, an obvious Hall of Famer, unbeaten as I make this video, is getting better than a plus 200 against a heavyweight champ who has been down in fights and who lost, let's be real here, three fights ago in embarrassing fashion. You got to be kidding me, folks. So I want folks, forget my videos, read the comments to my videos. I want folks to go ahead and read the comments to the videos. Right? Josh was cautious. He couldn't hit the under in the over-under in the Dominique Brazil fight. I'm supposed to believe he's going to race across the ring and KO Usyk, a guy who's never been stopped, hell, who's never lost as a professional. Let's say a boxing match breaks out instead of a fight. Let's say it actually comes down to, you know, showmanship and boxing in the ring. Right? Wow, do you really feel that Joshua is going to be as slick as Usyk? Also, why are so many people picking Joshua to win by early KO when guys like Carlos Tacco hung around against Joshua for several rounds? Right, folks? As I like to mention, Joseph Parker goes the distance against Joshua in the United Kingdom. Didn't Andy Ruiz two fights ago go the distance against Joshua and we're all talking about how Andy Ruiz barely trained for the fight. How Andy showed up for the fight unprepared. Andy himself has lost a lot of weight since losing the Joshua rematch. Andy knows he came in unprepared for that rematch. So what I want people to do is to look at Andy Ruiz. To look at Kubrat Pulev, ask yourself the question of whether either of them is as good as Usyk in your mind. Then, let's not even speculate. Let's go by actual numbers. Count the number of rounds that Joshua's last two fights went. We can't go back three because Joshua lost that third fight. So let's look at Joshua's last two wins. Count the number of rounds and divide that by two. What's the average number of rounds that Joshua's last two fights have gone? Right now, folks, if you believe that Usyk might be better than Kubrat Pulev and Andy Ruiz, and if Joshua's last two fights have averaged more than 10 rounds apiece, folks, the, the odds of Joshua, even a slimmed down Joshua, racing across the ring and KOing Kubrat, excuse me, KOing Usyk early in this fight. Don't you think they're slim? Also, where's the Usyk fight? Where you were watching the fight and you thought to yourself, man, Usyk is getting outboxed, not out-hustled. Right? I'll concede Derek Chisora is, you know, out hustling Usyk at times. But where's the fight where you thought, you know, the guy facing Usyk just seems to be the slicker, smoother boxer? In the comment section of this video, please list those fights. Understand too, Usyk has fought Maris Breedis. <laughs> in Breedis' backyard, by the way. I believe the Gassia fight is in Gassiev's backyard, by the way. Right? This is a guy who's actually been in the ring with some guys. Glowacki. Right? He's, he's been in the ring with some guys. And, of course, look at his passport. He's traveled around the world to fight world-class fighters. Going to the UK is nothing new for Usyk. He did so for the Bellew fight. 
Just look at Usyk's history and ask yourself, should this man against an opponent whose last two fights averaged 10 plus rounds, right? Should this guy be going off at a plus 205? I believe the answer is no. I believe this bet makes itself. If I tapped you on the shoulder in a casino and said, yeah, you're getting Usyk at plus 205, your next line should be, where can I place a bet? Then after that, you could say to me, hey, uh, Rich, who's he fighting? Right? I think Usyk's a live underdog. This fight is mispriced. Joshua, let's face it, hasn't been on a tear. He's just getting back in the saddle. Do you believe that Joshua could gallop around the ring like he did in the Ruiz rematch and beat Usyk? I don't, right? For those who might not have figured this out, Usyk has much faster foot speed than Anthony than uh, Andy Ruiz, right? So this is a great fight. Right? This fight really is an identity fight. If Joshua blows out Usyk, Usyk might well become the number one scalp on Joshua's resume. Right? Because Usyk is current. He hasn't been out the ring like Vladimir Klitschko was. Usyk's unbeaten. He hasn't been beaten by Tyson Fury like Vladimir Klitschko was before he fought Joshua. But understand the other side, which I believe is a distinct possibility. If Usyk beats Joshua, folks, he's one fight away from completely owning the era. Right? Because understand, if you have been undisputed at Cruiser, and let's say he beats the Fury Wilder winner, and he becomes undisputed at Heavy, I want you to think of the pantheon of great heavyweight fighters. Which one of them would not have had their star shine a little bit brighter? If you heard that they were undisputed in boxing's, we'll ignore the Bridger weight division, in boxing's two heaviest divisions. Think about it, right? So this is really a legacy fight. If Usyk knocks off Joshua and becomes the heavyweight champion, there is no one on the planet more worthy of sitting ringside for the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder third fight. Let me back away from that a little bit. <laughs> There's no current fighter more worthy. Let's give Larry Holmes his due. Holmes was a dominant champ. There's no current fighter more worthy of sitting ringside for that Fury Wilder third fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you, I know. Many of you disagree with me. You've made that clear in every Joshua video that I do in the comment section. I have no doubt people are going to tell me that I'm dissing Anthony Joshua, that I'm anti-British, right? Full disclosure, I've had family members live in the UK, right? But I'm going to hear I'm anti-British. I have something against British fighters, right? Please tell me if my math is right. Just answer simple, true or false. Joshua's last two opponents have averaged against him going at least 10 rounds. True or false? Let us know in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.